Welcome back to our 77th episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview Kate Lowe's with Roy LePage in Kawartha Lakes. In this episode, Kate and I talk about why relationships are so critical in small towns and how to manage your brand and your personal life in your community. And Kate shares how she's built incredibly strong relationships in the community by being authentic to herself and getting involved in things that matter to her and her team. And Kate shares what she does to ensure a steady flow of leads from out of town agent referrals and how critical that is to their success. And Kate shares a super easy way to add value to your community and enjoy doing it. And you'll be shocked at how simple it is. And we talk about how she uses social media to stay top of mind in her community by educating and having fun at the same time. Plus, we share a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Kate. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith. And today we've got a great guest. It's Kate Lowe's with Royal Page in Kawartha Lake. So Kate, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Kate Lowe's. I sell real estate in the Kawartha Lakes uh, with my partner, uh, Kevin Avery. Uh, so we're partners in life and business. Um, and why am I here today? I always love talking about our industry. And I think talking about our industry and what works and what doesn't has a whole different vibe talking to um, other realtors, right? So we spend most of our life talking to the public yeah, about yeah. Like, their portion of real estate. Um, but there's that whole other side talking to our colleagues and, and sort of that professional development piece. Yeah. And it's a big part of really growing to be able to serve your clients more. And that's important. That's why I, I do the show. And that's why I like getting different experiences and different views and, and different strategies and things like that. So it's important to, to, to get back. So I want to dive into your business and, and find out a bit more about how you do your business because you do, you definitely have a different unique approach and how you do it and kind of how you got there. So how did you get started in the business and, and what did that look like when you first got rocking and rolling? Yeah. So when I got into the business, I started as unlicensed um, admin support. Um, I think I had started my first course because um, I thought that that's what I wanted. Like I wanted to head in that direction, but I did start unlicensed um, and just the marketing side of things, a um, little bit of client care, that sort of thing. Uh, so that was my beginning. Um, but I, I got in um, with Kevin's team and Kevin's team at the time was very based in like rural and agricultural real estate. And that's totally my background. So prior to real estate, all of my uh, work experience was um, rural farm related um, agriculture sector. So it was a really natural transition, like a lot of similar faces, people we already knew, just a very different side of it. So that's, yep. that was my entry into the business. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. For for the viewers don't know, actually, Kate's in the area that I started my real estate license or got licensed in. And, and Kevin was actually, I was almost joined his team when I first got started years ago. So it's a very different market. And I think it's part of what makes what you do so unique in, in the, the approach. So you're in Kawartha Lakes. It's a very small town in the middle of not nowhere, but it's detached from where the, the GTA, which is the, the greater Toronto area for the listeners who don't know, it's it's farther away. So it's kind of happens its own little life and its own little little DNA makeup. So can you describe what you do and what it's like and where you, where you live? Yeah. So we definitely like, I mean, I, I love, and I hate the idea of like small town real estate because yeah. um, we are small town in a lot of ways, but then I think sometimes we sell ourselves short by saying small town. Cause it's like, we're not archaic. Like we're not yep. under a rock. Like we're up here doing cool things. Yep. Um, but at the same time, it is small town. So the basis of our business is so many people that you've known for decades or you've known um, forever. And you know, when people move to the community that they're new because you're yeah. like, hey, I've never met you before and that's <laughs> yeah. impossible. So yeah. there is that sort of element of um, if I don't know you, you must sort of be relatively new here because that's just how tight the community is, yeah. um, which is really cool. And probably one of the things that I love the most about our business is literally getting to be the cheerleader for our area, right? Yeah. Like I just had a message from a client last night and it was one of those moments where I was like, yes, like this is it. Um, so I had a coming soon sign on a property and I had a client who just closed on a deal a couple months ago, I guess, end of the summer, August. Um, and she texted and she was like, Hey, I just went around the corner in my neighborhood and saw your coming soon sign. And I thought <laughs> I keep meaning to text Kate to tell her, we're so glad we moved to Lindsay. Like we love it. It's everything you said it was 
We're so happy here. And then I saw you're coming sooner. And I was like, see, that's why I'm supposed to send her a message. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's the basis of it. Right. So it's really for us and, and me in particular building the business, um, in such a way that people become friends, right? Yep. We're, we're building our network, but we're building our community. Um, and I joke about it, but I'm not really joking on appointments when I say like, we're always recruiting great new people to come to our area. Like well, <laughs> yeah. as long as you're nice, you're kind, you're great, yeah. come on yeah. in. Like, yeah. um, which is, you know, kind of a fun jumping off point, especially if you're meeting sort of a realtor.ca lead that's new to the area that you don't have an existing relationship with. Um, that's kind of always a nice segue. Yeah, and it, I think also it's, interesting for people to know that it's you have a lot of different uh types of real estate in the area like some people are just used to selling suburban air they live in suburbia and that's all they sell for for, for the Corth lakes it's there's cottage properties there's rural properties there's farms there's in town and there's kind of everything so you kind of have to know who you're dealing with you kind of have to know a lot of different things with the real estate market to 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 thrive for you 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 said you started in the agriculture but you kind of shifted your gears into residential so what did that look like for you then to or to, to kind of wear both hats in, in the real estate side of things yeah, definitely. So for, for our area specifically, yes. And that's always a conversation we have, like you go to conferences and you're networking, you talk to people about sort of their base of, of their business. Um, and you'll talk and you'll say, well, I do a little bit of everything. And sometimes you get kind of that funny look, like, well, yeah. wouldn't you want to like pick something? Like, what do you mean? And well, no, based on our population base, if I didn't do everything, <laughs> that would be not leave like, right. So um, based on our population, but uh, so the transition for me, so the original was, um, Kevin was obviously a super strong lister in the farm department, uh, where Act, I re- actual farm, like actual, farm. yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. like, like yeah. barn cows, like the yeah, whole, yeah. the whole shebang. Um, but my sort of strength right off the hop was, um, the nurturer, right? So like my personality is very much like take clients under your wing and sort of handhold them through the process. Um, so where I began the transition to more of the residential side was, um, if you think about like ma and pa, like grandma and grandpa are at whatever age where they're selling the farm and they need to come to town to like a bungalow, a condo, whatever that looks like. Um, that was where my sort of piece of the business really specialized was he's going to sort of run with the farm side of it. And I'm going to help them wrap their head around what moving to town is going to look like. Um, and then from there, the repeat referral of when they're ready to move out of that bungalow, like whatever. And then that just sort of the domino effect has built my residential side of the business. Um, or they have a grandchild or someone who's like, well, I'm not buying a farm, but grandma and grandpa said you were amazing. And that, that has, sort of been how I've built my piece of the the residential side. So I'll, I'll ask you then, how much would you say of your business is from that local people who, like you said, you, you grew up, you know them, and how much of it is from people moving out? Because I know when I started 14 plus years ago, that was really just starting, the, the growth from outside of town was kind of really starting to pick up. I know in the last few years, it's been more. What, what would you say is that, how much is it from people you know, and how much is it from new marketing and new people coming in? Um, so I would say like, even so say the first five years of my career versus the, the, the most recent five years of, of my career, um, the last five years definitely feels like someone found Corth Lakes on a map and was like, Hey, like, they're <laughs> out there and they're not that far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been a, like a whole different, um, journey. The, like my first five years in the business, um, I would have said I was probably like 60, 40, maybe seven, like, <laughs> towards 70 30 repeat like referral yep. um, people I know connection wise and then 30 percent would have been marketing based um now at this point I would say probably 70 to 80 percent of our listing business is is repeat referral people we know um yep. farming our community um and then and then the rest would be marketing or like an out of town referral as well. Like I would say probably 90% of our business as a whole um, yep. is repeat and referral. Yep. Probably 70% of that's what we're doing ourselves with our community. And then probably the other 10 to 20 is from agents that we've built, obviously relationships with that are connecting us to the few people in town we might not know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. So obviously the community for you guys is a big part of it. And that's part of what I teach. And anyone who's watched my show or done my training knows that I teach the, the CPR, which is community positioning relationships. And being in a smaller town like that, obviously the community plays a more key role, I find, than 
big suburbia or, or, or city living. What has it been like for you guys to really embrace that? Or what have you done to really kind of take, combine the community with the real estate business as a whole? Yeah. Um, well, the first piece that I can sort of think of is I, I mean, I think probably most realtors do this as a whole. However, I would say definitely depending on the population, I, I do think there's probably some a little bit more anonymity, maybe in a bigger center where if you kind of put your head down and like, don't make eye contact, <laughs> or you might kind of sneak through. Yeah. Um, that's not happening in Lindsay, Ontario. I can promise you that. Um, so my first thing is really ev everything is an opportunity. Like in a community, our size, mm. it's virtually impossible to go somewhere that someone doesn't see us and know that we're in real estate. Yep. Um, probably the funniest example I've had of that in my career was when I walked into daycare with my infant child, um, my oldest, and the person that greeted us at daycare was like, is this Kevin Avery's child? He looks just like his dad. <laughs> and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, he's, how old was he? Uh, five and a half months. <laughs> and they're funny. like, this must be Kevin Avery. I'm like, oh my Lord, like, what have I done? Um, but literally from the day we walked into daycare, they already knew us to be realtors. Mm -hmm. right? So just sort of having that mindset of everyone in town, probably not everyone, but uh, everyone that I'm bumping into that recognizes me in some capacity, the likelihood is that they recognize us either from something we've been a part of or yep. from our marketing. Yep. Um, so just having that, that in mind and trying to be really mindful of like where I go and what, like that everything is always a reflection that, that's a key part right. to it. And I think a lot of agents misunderstand that or, or don't think about that. And it's, you can use that to your advantage, like you said, to, to go out there and people know who you are. But then if something happens, if you're that well known and you're doing your job and you're getting out there and getting to know people, you have to be on your best behavior, if you will. And you have to be careful. And I, I, I half joke, but when I moved there, I was single and I was dating and I was getting out there and meeting people. And it's like, oh, I got to be careful. I'm like, I'm dating people. It's like, I ran to someone and I had a, I had a date with, and I got a sign call from someone and I'm like, Oh, I went on a date with her. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you never know who you're going to run into and, and, and meet up with. So yeah, it, you have to be cognizant that you want to be professional, but you still want to be community minded and still parlay that, Hey, we're professional, but we still are humans and we're still part of this community and, and we serve it. And I know for you guys, it's a big part of what you do is really tying the, your, your life and what you do into the, the business as well. Yeah. Like we, we live and work here. Right. So like, will you see me at the grocery store with my kids being complete menaces? A hundred percent. Will I do my absolute best to be like, Hey, how are you? Hi. Yeah. You can probably tell this isn't a great time to chat. You want to talk about houses? Call me. No problem. Right. But just sort of having that, that perspective. Um, and I think as an agent, if you're working in, in your own community, it's something we've had to, it's caused friction at family events for us mm. because we'll say, we're just going to stop here and make a quick stop. And then we'll be there for dinner at five. Um, and then you run into someone, <laughs> right? like you run into someone at the grocery store, you run into someone at Canadian, Tire, like doesn't matter, right? Yeah. You always are running into someone. So it's sort of having that mindset that sometimes we're going to be late to things because if someone, if you can tell someone's trying to strike up that conversation with you, there's a really fine line of, you've got to at least acknowledge it. Sometimes you can gracefully say, Hey, like we're just on our way to an event, yeah. but let's have a coffee this week or whatever, but just, you know, planting those seeds and sort of really trying to read who you're running into all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, has, has been a big one, uh, for us. The other thing that we've done is we've maintained a huge, um, visibility presence in the ag community. So we're big, mm -hmm. big, orders of um like the agricultural society the fair like that's kind of a staple event yep. um in the community so we do some sort of standard advertising there marketing uh but then we also sponsor a couple of specific classes for the kids nice. um so that's that's a big one because we know that that's a foundation of our business um the other one that i've really sort of honed over the last few years like it started with daycare and now has transitioned like my guys are in sk and grade four <laughs> And um, so building that relationship with the school, right? So yeah. the different community places that you um, are a part of and really sort of nurturing, nurturing those connections, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a big part of it. And it's then you already have the connections, you enjoy it, you're part of it, something you, you can connect with, you can, you can build relationships easier because it's something you are already involved with. And that was going to be my next question was, how do you tie in non-real estate stuff. And so you answered that perfectly because I, I think for a lot of agents, they think 
I've, in my experience, they've stayed, a lot of them think linearly when it comes to real estate. They think I have to market real estate. I have to market myself. I have to market open houses and things like that. And, and the reality is you can tie in your, your, yourself and your promotions and your stuff to the community that you're part of and the, the connections that you've already got, like the agriculture society, like you said with the, the, the school and things like that. Yep. You have to figure out what's going to work for you and how you're going to connect with those people. But you can absolutely tie in your life to the community and then still tie it back to real estate. So what things, you said you mentioned sponsoring things like that. What kind of things are you doing specifically to make the, the, the connection to real estate? Because I find a lot of agents struggle with doing it tactfully. They, they want to get their name out there, but they don't want to just breathe down people's necks. So what are you guys doing to, to make those connections to the real estate business? So I think the, the easiest example I can think of, um, we probably do some other things that I just sort of do almost so naturally they might not occur to me. <laughs> um, but the big one for me is social media. And, um, but specifically, like I took a couple of different social media courses over the last couple of years, and there was a lot of sort of um, healthy debate, let's call it, between like, do I run my personal social media? Do I have a separate social media account for my business? Like, what yeah. does it look like? It may depend on the market people are trying to build themselves in, like maybe in some of the bigger centers, having your personal, like mixing the two doesn't make sense. Yep. Um, I thought like, I thought that for a long time, do I need a separate one? What do I do? Uh, ultimately I've just stuck to having one because for me, um, I am my ideal client. Yep. So the people that I want to serve are the sort of, um, youngish families. I say youngish, like I love first time buyers. They don't tend to make up the bulk of my business. I tend to be sort of that second to fifth house, like yep. somewhere in there, those middle of the road yep. kind of, um, families. So uh, like my life and whatever I'm putting on social media is exactly the same type of life my ideal client is yeah, living. Exactly. Right. So like my Instagram handle is at Kate Sells Kawartha. So it's branded, like it's subtle, right? Yep. So like people are looking me up personally, great, yep. but they obviously know I sell something. Yep. Um, and it's building that. And I think that the big ticket for me um, has been put mixing the personal and the business makes it relatable and it makes it okay for someone to reach out and ask questions that if I was super formal in how I marketed myself as a realtor, I'm not sure I would get those leads. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. So they can send me a message and be like, Oh my gosh, like the picture of the boys, I haven't seen them in so long. Hey, by the way. Yeah. Right. So it, it makes me just a normal person for them to reach out and, and they see the, like the both sides. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. um, and I think that that's been key in sort of building that market within the community and, and showing the different things that we do. It's also, I'm, I'm not salesy. Like I'm the, probably the least salesy salesperson. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't do hard sell. Like I just yep. literally don't, it's not in my DNA. I don't think it makes me feel quite uncomfortable quite quickly. <laughs> um, so for me, it's when I mix my real estate posts in there, it's more like a day in the life of like, Hey, this is what I'm doing today. And it just happens to be that I'm a realtor. And so, Hey, check out this cool property. Yep. Um, so it's really just building that recognition. That uh, and, that, that's, and that's key because like you said, it, it connects with the people and you're connected with your ideal audience and they'll resonate with the things you like. And there's going to be people who are not turned off, but just aren't interested or don't care. And you probably wouldn't want to work with them anyways. If they're a retiree and you don't work with retirees, or if you want to work with, like you said, you're, you're going to connect with people who connect with your life and, and what you do. And I think it's important, like you said, is to, to use your personal account professionally as well. I, I know I did that when I got started. I had my, my own profile and I had my professional profile. And then I ended up taking over with my professional one and just became me and I my old 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 profile I don't even use anymore because like my professional one's just become my life and that's who yeah. it is and it just I'm like I'm not ashamed of who I am so I'm like uh, that becomes personal and professional and I find a lot of agents struggle with that because they think they have to be this cookie cutter suit and tie person that they they, they think that real estate agents are and the reality is people want to connect with real people and want to connect with people who do connect with the community and are engaged and active and have a life too. And, and you're going to, you're going to find, you'll probably build better relationships than just str strictly trying to be super professional. Yeah. And I think like, for me, um, if I think back to agents that I have watched, um, thrive, like people that have been sort of mentor type, um, people that have had businesses that I have looked up to, or I think, mm -hmm. Hey, that person's doing a great job. Um, and also the flip side, if I look at the people around that I'm seeing struggle, right. 
the the people that are struggling are doing the opposite of what the people that are striving <laughs> yeah. are doing, like yeah. obviously. Um, but from the perspective of the people that I generally see struggle the most in this business are the people who don't know who they're supposed to show up as. Mm. Right. So they're they're trying to be all things to all people. Yeah. And it, it will give you vertigo in this business if you try to be all things to all people. Um, so I think the big thing with like for me, some people privacy wise, I get it, or they have circumstances where they can't or don't feel they can merge yep. the two. Yep. But for me, my people won't be offended by anything that they're going to see on my personal social media. So yep. knowing who I'm trying to serve and who, who my clientele are, um, takes a lot of stress off. I don't schedule my social media posts or my marketing because my life just happens. So I <laughs> yeah. don't schedule my life to look a certain way on Instagram. Yep. Um, which takes a whole lot of stress out of it. <laughs> also, um, when like the most stressful thing, I think probably for the first, I don't know, five or six years, I don't know if you surveyed people, but um, probably the most stressful thing for realtors in the beginning of their career, especially is listing appointments, right? Yeah. Like, doesn't it feel like the equivalent of like whatever you had to get on stage, like speeches? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, okay, here, hi. Yeah. Um, if you are using your personal social media and you're building that recognition of like, this is just who I am as a human. And this happens to be what I do for a living. Nothing that's going to come out of my mouth in a listing appointment is also going to catch them off guard. Right. Cause I, I'm not showing up at an appointment where I got the phone call based on this, like super proper, super, whatever yep. inside the box sort of person on social media. And then I get there and something like I'm frazzled or whatever. And something comes out of my mouth and I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I just forget. Right. So yeah using the two takes so much pressure off because they called you and they already know somewhat who you are or they wouldn't have called. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that that's huge. And, and just sort of figuring out like who those people are and, and yeah. working towards that instead of trying to be the expert on everything. Yeah. Right. I had uh, Michael Kreese on last year on my show and it was it's advice you, you know your heart but when you hear it and you hear it said that way it makes more sense so he was talking about video and he said that a lot of agents are terrified of using video he said they're afraid of their they're gonna look silly or people are gonna think they're they're different he's like if you show up being you he said on the video when you show up in person they're gonna like you because that's who you are he said if you show up and you're being someone else on camera and then you show up and you're not who you are on camera then they're gonna be like i don't like you because i liked who i saw on the camera or vice versa if they don't like you on camera they probably won't like you in person so as long as you're just being authentic and being yourself, then people will connect with you or they're not going to connect with you. And I'd rather get that out of the way. And then they know when you're going to find like your tribe and connect with the people who are, who want to do business with you and who like what you're about and, and like what you're doing with the community and, and like how you present yourself, then it makes the listing presentation a lot easier. It makes the, the, the yeah. sales part a lot easier. And in a small community, when you don't know, like you literally, you know, you might literally be running to max to get milk because there's a yeah. milk happening at home because you can't have cereal because there's no milk. <laughs> and you're like in track pants on a Sunday morning at 8 30 and you walk in, you're like, oh, and I'm instantly being interviewed for an, a list. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're just you, there also doesn't need to be that stress around like, am I on or am I off? Because yeah. I might be a bit frazzled, but I'm the same me you're going to get all the way around. Right. Yeah, so exactly. it doesn't matter. Um, funny you should say that as far as video. Um, so we do video. I'm in almost all of them. We do agent intros on all of our videos. Um, yes. We are one of the only agents, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe in our market, we are one of the only agents that are doing um, like a full-on agent intro. There, I think mm. there's a few that have embraced um, some voiceover right. um, and, and there's some that have done some like branding videos, but they don't appear in their own property listings. Right. And it's something that there have been times where I think, oh, really, like, it's just, you know, do I have to do that today? Yeah. Um, but one of like two things, one, that's exactly the conversation I had with my videographer. All we're trying to do is introduce you as a real human so that when someone wants to pick up the phone and call you, they already feel like they know you a little yeah, bit, exactly. right? Yep. Um, so it almost feels like a warm introduction, even though technically by definition, it's cold because you've never yeah. met them, right? Yeah. Um, two, some of the biggest traction I get for marketing and branding is my blooper reels yeah. that come from my videos. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And people die laughing over the bloopers. And I'm like, the funny part is like that blooper will happen in your driveway. Like yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's exactly. that's going to show up and list your house, but yeah. it's exactly the same thing, right? It's, it's that whole consistent, like 
no one looks at those videos and goes, I can't believe that came out of your mouth. They're like, that's, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. that's just who you are, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I want to ask then about the other things you're doing that ties into the real estate, because a lot of agents, again, focus on the return on investment. If I spend this much money, I need to get this much money back. From the sounds of it, you guys are doing a lot. Of, you got to kind of have your hands in a lot of different pieces and you're you're, you're getting up there in different places. How do you track what's working or do you track what's working and what has worked best for you? If, if you were to go back and track to see, Hey, these, these are, these are knocking out the park for us. Yep. Um, we do track. Um, my tracker ha- is named Trisha. <laughs> and she does all of my tracking. I do not. Um, Trisha tracks source uh, for everything. Um, so we can look at things at the end of the year and go, where did that come from? Um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and sort of look at return on investment. Um, one thing I can tell you because of sort of our, like, because we focus on that sort of community, um, piece, we probably cannot accurately track our conversion and our cost per opportunity sort of, um, nearly as effectively as obviously if I was paying for leads, I would know exactly what that lead cost me. Um, but, but two things in terms of that, we, we sort of have an agreement and we've, we've made this a principle in our business. We don't do anything looking for a short-term return everything we do is a long-term play. Um, So if we find ourselves looking at something going, well, how many ends would I have to get out of that in the next three months to justify that? I'm like, this isn't for us. That's not who we are. Um, So so that's one. Um, Two, the other thing that we do is we try to um, sort of one of our like basic principles is I am happy to educate you about the real estate market and how organized real estate works, regardless of whether you're ready to be a client or not. Um, so just positioning ourselves as like, please call me and ask your questions, please call me, you know, it's the classic. I don't know if we're ready to sell yet. Like, we don't really know what's happening. This is going on. Oh my gosh. Like you, you, you're not a therapist. I can't believe I just told you, (laughs) right? Like how many conversations start like that? And our answer is always, that's okay. Like if you don't have good information to work with, you can't make good decisions. So we're happy to come tell you what we think your house is worth or, or whatever your best move is. And if the best move for you is to do nothing right now, that's okay too. Exactly. Right. Um, so it's like all of that stuff is, is long, the long game. None of that is, I need to sell three more houses this week. And so no, I'm not willing to come and tell you what you should do six years from now, because I don't have time for that. Exactly. Um, so that, that's probably our biggest thing. That's something I, I've always said is that I'd rather have, five years to build a relationship than five weeks. And a lot of old school trainers is like, if they're not moving in the next 30 days, get rid of them, get rid of that lead. And I'm like, you have an opportunity to educate and and to inform. And people are trying to make their decisions. They're trying to figure out if it's the right move. They're trying to figure out what should I do? And if you can be that resource, you can be the help them, educate them and and get them into making a right decision, whether it's making a move or not, and and, and really build the relationship that you're going to, you're going to have a much longer, healthier business than just strictly chasing that next lead who's looking to do something right now and you'll have easier time doing the business too because they have the relationship and they trust you there's the trust is huge and if i think about just like my coi and sort of who who some of the people are that stand out in my mind some of my best referrers or my biggest cheerleaders as kevin calls them um are the people who didn't end up doing anything right? They were the people we went and saw and we helped them sort of figure out, like, I think your best move is to just sit tight or, or whatever. Um, but they were people that we didn't actually make a dime off of. Yeah, exactly. And yet they're out there telling everyone with a set of years, like, Oh my gosh. Right. And, um, a, that feels good in a world where sometimes sales feels really icky. And especially I think in society in the last couple of years in particular, like there's that cold edge that people seem (laughs) to sort of develop. So, those warm conversations and just being someone who's like, there's no hidden agenda. My agenda is to give you all the information and help you figure out what makes the most sense. Um, Something we started, I think we are into, we might be just sort of coming up. We might be just around our third year anniversary um, of of this campaign, if you will. Um, Our ad, we still are in the local paper every week. Again, perhaps a bit of a small town. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's some markets where people (laughs) still print a newspaper for real estate. (laughs) Exactly. Um, We do. Uh, And every year we get the bill and we go, how much did we spend on the paper again? And there's that small part of me that goes, this is insane. There's got to be a better (laughs) return on, like, this is like, we no. Um, but then every time, like probably two to four times a month, 
um, Kev or I will come home and say to each other, Hey, I ran into someone this week and guess what they said to me? Cause it's kind of like a running joke now, right? Yeah. Cause we're kind of like, I don't know if this works out well, two to four times a month, one of us will come home and go, Hey, I ran into someone and guess what the first words out of their mouth were. I read your section in the paper every week. I'm so glad <laughs> you do it. And I'm like, well, thank gosh. Cause I was just getting ready to start <laughs> yeah. overanalyzing it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we run a segment in, in the paper every like the real estate section. So we mix it, right? Like we put our listings in obviously, but then we always reserve a section of our ad. Um, and it's like a Q and a section. So it's nice. like the most commonly asked questions, um, market analysis, whatever. And, Sometimes I think as agents, we overanalyze what the public needs, especially because um, if you think about like your social media being curated, yeah. most of what I see is posts from other realtors because that's who I'm friends with on social yeah, media. Exactly. So then I start thinking, oh, that's overdone or, oh, someone does this or, oh, someone does that. But then I have to stop and remind myself that my community and my potential client don't follow mm. 700 other realtors. Yeah. Good right. Point. So the questions that people ask, like we literally just, I keep like a running note in my phone of like when I get leads or when people are like, Hey, I've always wanted to know this question or, mm -hmm. or what about this? Or, and I just sort of keep that running list of ideas. Um, or also the other thing that we use to generate content for that section in our ad is, um, where do we bang our head against the wall most? So what's the most misunderstood thing or what's the yeah. thing we are constantly having to correct people? No, that's not actually how that works. Yeah. Like that sort of thing. Um, but the number of people that literally we run into, they're like, I'm not going to buy or sell anytime soon, but I literally open it and read it because I've learned so many things I had no idea about, yep. um, which is cool. Cause that, that feels good to actually educate people and take them yeah. to a place where something that they were like, Ooh, I don't like, I don't even know what goes on over there. Yeah. Um, they feel empowered now. And exactly. they all, um, that's part of training them that, Hey, like if your question's too complex to hope that the answer shows up in the core of the lakes this week. <laughs> Feel free to give me a call okay. and ask whatever other questions you have, right? It's just such a gateway for people to feel like you're not going to be upset if I want to ask you a question. Yeah, and that's that for a lot of people, that's the terrifying thing. They they know that they don't know everything and they're afraid to ask questions. They're afraid of getting the wrong answer. They're afraid of an agent taking advantage of them or something like that. So knowing that there's someone that they can trust that's giving good advice, that's giving solid advice consistently, that again builds that trust, builds that credibility, and helps position you. And that's part of that CPR that I talk about is that the positioning as that expert and the ambassador. And that literally does both of those where you're showing that, hey, I'm looking out for you guys and I know what I'm talking about. And that helps further the, the relationships, which is which is huge. So yeah, I want to sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no, go for it. I was gonna say I was gonna shift gears for a second. So if you sure. want to wrap up, what were you gonna say? No, I was just going to say, I always toe the line because sometimes I think some of my questions get too technical. Like okay. I'm, I don't want to overwhelm people, right? With yeah. the content. Um, but I also think there's a fine line and that goes back exactly to what you were saying is I want to make it easy to understand, but having the odd question that's a bit technical that people might go, whoa, like, I don't mm. know what it is, isn't a bad thing because yeah. that's also that opportunity to show them that they wouldn't have even known to ask that question. Right. Yeah. right? So it's like, oh, I was just listening to a podcast the other day and they talked about um, I'll get it wrong. It was Brene Brown. Just, I don't want to take credit for the idea because it's not mine. Um, but there's a specific level of complexity that's involved to keep someone's interest. Right. Mm. So like if something's too simple or too easy, yep. then I feel like you think they're dumb when they read it, so there's that level of complexity where it's like, it needs to challenge them a little bit. So just keeping that in mind, like we, I try to sort of toe the line in that newspaper about you know, what's a little bit complex that they're going to go, wow, like I didn't even know that was a thing, but yep. then make my answer super simple so that now they right. understand it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's great. And it's, it's that people don't know what they don't know. And if you can show them what they don't know, then they'll go, oh, I didn't even know I was supposed to know that. So that's great. And what else does she know that I don't know? And, and what else should I, should I be learning about? Holy crap. I thought I knew everything about real estate. And yeah. We better get hurt. We don't really know what we don't know. So exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's our goal. Exactly. So yeah, I want to shift gears because I think you, what you mentioned earlier about people finding Quartha Lakes in, in a map in the last little bit, and you're getting an influx of people moving up there. I think there's a lot of people, at least in where we are and around the GTA, and if you're in other areas where you're kind of having this mass exodus of people moving out of the city, coming out to these smaller neighborhoods because of, of or, and, and, and towns and stuff. I think you've seen a lot of, I've seen it personally, and I'm sure you've probably seen it too, where the agents who haven't adapted and haven't shifted, these agents who've been around a lot of time in, in these small towns never really had to advertise and connect with people outside of the area. And they've just kind of done what they've always done to, to the people that are there. There's a shift and an opportunity for a lot of agents. And I know that's something you've been focusing on is really shifting how you're reaching your audience because 
you got to catch people where they're coming from to right. get them to, to, to where you are. So what does that look like for you? Because I know you mentioned when we talk, talked before we, we were recording that you've really sh- kind of shifted over the last couple of years. So what does that look like for you? And what have you been seeing working to capture people before they even moved to, to, to your area? Yeah. So I would say the capturing people um, coming to the area, we're probably mastering more from a referral side. We're not, I wouldn't say that we're killing it on picking up buyers before they know that they're looking here. Where I see the big opportunity for us is we're an area that, um, as you know, um, has changed a lot since you've lived here, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. but, um, but we're an area that stifled growth for a very long time. So there's massive amounts, massive, <laughs> um, let's go, Re- let's relatively speaking, a little bit, hang on. Yeah. Um, but massive amounts of development coming down the pipe for in, in relation to the size of our area. Um, so the opportunity, um, right now, I believe is for us is, is from that community ambassador and getting them engaged in what's happening, um, in the community, because a good chunk of the buyers coming to our area. So potential new clients for us, obviously, yep. um, are coming through new development, which means they had bought their house before any realtor exactly. even had a chance to know them. Right. Yep. Um, so recognizing that that's the piece that we're sort of focusing on, Um, and positioning ourselves and really focusing on like the highlighting the community, pointing out what's going on, um, getting involved from that side to get engaged with them before they get to that point where whether it's two to five years or or whatever, somewhere in there, they're going to all of a sudden need to list. And if they haven't built relationships in the community, who are they going to call? Exactly. Right. Um, So that's, that's the big piece for us. So, and that's probably for a lot of small towns, if, if the bulk of your growth is new development they're coming to the sales center on whatever day opening day (laughs) um you know the market in Lindsay has changed when we're selling out on opening day like what are we (laughs) like what um and like just to give context to that when i started uh in 2011 unlicensed 2012 i got licensed very beginning of 2012 i think um you still couldn't sell new inventory off of plans in Lindsay. Yeah. Like it was virtually unheard of to sell a home off of plants. People were like, I need to see it, smell it, touch it. Yeah. Like it has to be a thing. Um, so selling like new development out on whatever day by plans to like an empty field of nothing um, is a massive shift for our, for our area. Probably not for some, that's the way they've been doing it for yeah. decades, but it's totally different for us. So it's a, it's a really new opportunity for us to have whole new communities showing up yep. um, and, and being able to position ourselves as that sort of community liaison um, for them. And I think that's a really important part for our listeners to, to, to take away because there is so much opportunity if you're willing to, to play the long-term game. Like you said, you know, you're, you're playing it for the two to five year game. You're not trying to get in with the new builds to just get something right now in three months, six months, whatever. If you do it correctly and you're willing to put the time in and invest, the you can lock that down. And, and some of the agents that I've talked to and have crushed it in their farms are ones who went after new developments the ones who i've seen really own their area did Mm -hmm. exactly what you're talking about is they're going after that area because they know they probably first time buyers or someone buying that area from out of town who are buying a new development and don't have the relationship they built from the builder like you said they don't have an agent following up with them after that because maybe they bought new and their agent was pissed off at them they never (laughs) bought a home with them resale and so they 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 let go of them exactly (laughs) So yeah. there's a tremendous opportunity and we're seeing the development happen in, in a lot of these small towns that never happened before. I know in my hometown where I grew up, same thing. We were stifled for new development. We didn't have that growth. And there's a ton of opportunity because again, most agents who have been around for a long time in small towns have never even thought to go that route. They've never even thought of that. And to commit to it, you can really take a huge market share in that, but it's a long-term play and you, you have to you have to think it out and, and be consistent with it. So what are you guys doing then to really tap into that? Because I think it's important to know how do you stick with it and how do you do it cost effectively too? Yep. Um, I mean, I think that the easiest thing for anyone to adopt is always from the community event side of things mm. because it pre-populates a lot of your content, yep. um, right? Pre-populate as in the events are happening. You just have to do a bit of groundwork to know what they are, where they are, share all yep. of that. Um, but the other thing that we do... Um, 
very, very consistently is every single listing and sale we do. Um, we do the postcard campaign, the traditional just listed, just sold, even yep. though the just listed don't even make it to their mailbox. <laughs> yeah. Sold sign is on it. Yeah. Um, but it's that. And then it, we've, we've looked at also adding um, some of that sort of education piece to the same mailers, right? So, so positioning ourselves as that expert in the community, even <laughs> though they're a long way out from needing it, um, mm-hmm. they start to go, Hey, they, these people are in our mailbox a couple of times a month in, in our particular pocket or, or whatever. Right. Yep. Um, so it's, it's sort of that quiet, um, presence that's there. Um, and then the other thing is, is really just getting involved in the community. So I'm really lucky in the fact that the school that my kids go to is also one of the areas that's growing the most Mm. as far as a new pocket. So like I get to sort of double up there as being, um, school presence, but I think that that's the big one. And, and the other thing, um, with those new communities too, is a lot of people, if you're in a smaller area, if you're in an area like this great migration of everyone out of the GTA. If you're in any of the feeder areas that are seeing the surge, um, it's either new development or a lot of city agents are traveling further with their buyers. However, they're not then going to be the person that keeps them in the loop with what's happening in this new community. So those people literally like stork and baby, like they drop their (laughs) little baby into this new market. And then that baby was like, I don't like, I don't know anyone. Like, how do I find this? Um, One of the places that I have, um, focused on is in, on Facebook, in the local moms group. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of different local moms groups and I try intentionally. So like, sometimes I'm just cruising as a mom, but other times I'm scrolling very intentionally and trying to be a very active participant in my community and for the moms. And especially, uh, when the, the post is like, we're new to town, we just moved here. I'm wondering, how do I sign my kid up for soccer? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, is that super salesy? No, because technically I'm commenting from my personal account, yep, Exactly. but on my account tells you if they happen to click on it, like I'm a realtor, I'm this, yep. blah, 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 blah. Yep. It's just becoming that name recognition even so that then when they go, okay, well, it's like, where have I heard that before? Mm. And, and they come back. So that's, that's been the biggest one um, for me, especially is, is the mom's group where yeah. that's the natural sort of way people join community now more so than maybe in person. Yep. Um, yep. Especially yeah, last have to. Here's the digital, <laughs> yeah. like you weren't like, don't come near me. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they, they hop in, like they go Lindsay mom's group. Um, so that's been, been a big one, but I think that that would be the same for anything. Like Kevin participates a lot in um, like the Corther Lakes farm groups. Mm. Right. So same thing. Like we just bought a farm. We need fencing. We need this. We need, who do we call for this? Yeah. Um, so just really building our knowledge and just being willing to help people out with the information. Exactly. And that, that will go way further than just an ad or just talking about how great you are, just, just, just sold or just listed. When you combine that all together, yeah. that's when you start to see those results. And th- there's other opportunities. Like I, I always tell agents, don't just promote yourself, promote other people. And in those right. community groups, when you get people who are new to the area, they don't have a mover. They don't have a contractor. They don't have a plumber. They don't have a, a, a babysitter or a dog groomer. So if you can then get out there and promote the people that you work with, you are killing two birds with one stone and that you're providing value. You're helping your preferred vendors and it's keeping you top of mind, which can add a ton of value to those people long-term. So when they are ready, like you said, they remember you over the other person who just cold called them or whatever. Well, Kevin's, Kevin's analogy used to be in like, we're getting dangerously close to the period of time where this ex- explanation like won't even make sense to the new buyers. Um, <laughs> but he always used to say, I'm like the bell operator. So when someone new comes to town, yep. they call and they're like, I don't know if you ever heard him say that, but he was like, literally like, I'm just yep. like putting people into each other, right? Hey, yep. I need this. Okay. Call Jeff, call this person, call whoever. Right. Um, yeah. And it feels really good. And for mm-hmm. me, my business needs to feel good. Like I need it to be rewarding. And some of the biggest reward is seeing everyone else win. Right. And I don't always get the win. Like that win doesn't always directly impact me, but it feels good to see everyone else winning. And long-term we absolutely, absolutely win. And if you're trying to build a business without spending insane amounts of money on marketing, yes, your time is worth money, but it's also the resource that you can choose how you spend it. So you can commit a couple of like an extra hour every morning. If you want to get up an hour earlier and say, I'm going to spend an hour like thoughtfully contributing to some of those groups on yeah. social media or whatever, right? Like that's a hundred percent doable for everybody. Exactly. And I think that's a perfect way to help stop or slow down the fatigue from this business. Cause a lot of people, when they are just transactionally based and they're just looking at the, the grind of real estate, 
it, it can be lonely. It can be tiring. It can be exhausting. It can be, you lose interest in things by doing things you like, by doing things you support or be part of things you support and, and giving back to the community. It keeps you interested. It keeps you excited about it. It keeps you engaged and you then want to do it. And you enjoy doing those things because you're building real relationships, not strictly real estate relationships. And that really helps pull you through when, when, when you're going, what am I doing? This is because I've been there. I'm sure we've all been there going, man, this is a tough business or I just lost that deal and I was hoping to get it. And those the yep. community involvement can really keep pulling you through and, and, and help you elevate what you're doing. Yeah. It adds, it adds a different dimension, right? Like it adds depth to, to your career when you've got things that you enjoy doing that serve the business. So instead of trying to figure out how I can split my calendar into that many more little boxes to go, I got to have time for business creation. Mm. Well, business creation can be done at my kid's soccer game. Exactly. Right. So like all of a sudden now I don't have to have twice as many blocks in my schedule. If some of what I'm doing socially is also my business creation, my building relationships, um, supporting other organizations, right. All, all those things, all of a sudden now I have way more time freedom than I thought I did because I'm doubling up instead of trying to figure out how to be three people at the same time. Exactly. That's I teach strategy stack and that's exactly that where you, you layer the strategies of what you're doing to, to get more out of it and get more time back. So that's awesome. So I want to wrap up then with a best piece of advice. So if you were giving some advice to our listeners, trying to get involved, trying to give back, whether it's from a big town or small town, what advice would you give to, to our viewers and what they can do in their business? Um, so I'm not sure that this is specific to trying to build your business, but it, it is something that my very first broker in uh, real estate used to say all the time. Um, and in full disclosure, I don't think I appreciated it as much uh, then. Um, but now a decade later, um, uh, and he's no longer with us, and it's the piece that I sort of hang on to. Uh, it's actually framed in our office. Um, and he always used to say, first things first, second things never, always wait to worry. And I would literally be like, you'd have a deal blowing up. You'd have somebody like yelling at you something terrible. And he would go, now listen, first things first, second things never, always wait to worry. And you were like, mm. huh? <laughs> yeah. He literally be like, please leave. Like nothing you yeah, said yeah, is yeah. helpful. Um, but a hundred percent helpful. Like so mm. many times, right? You get off the phone and you're like, well, that was a disaster. I'm just waiting for like everything to blow up. And I can't count the number of times that I've just been like, wait to worry. Like it's not a problem until it's really a problem. Yep. Just don't worry. Um, yep. And I think that's a big one and it, it applies to everything. Um, but specifically in a people-based business like real estate, um, what I love about real estate is it's never the same twice. What I hate about real estate is it's never the same. <laughs> exactly. So there's no such thing as mastering it because the yeah. human element's always going to change it. Yeah. So you can do everything right and someone still might throw you a curveball. But what you can do is you can wait to worry until there's actually something worth worrying about. Ah, that's great advice. It's yeah. if we can take it to heart and, and apply it, it's great advice. Like you said you didn't appreciate it at the beginning, but when you live it and you go through it, it definitely makes a big difference. So that's awesome. And yeah. we always wrap up with a best book. So what's one book that you recommend that's had an impact on your life or you think would have an impact on our viewers? Um, so I have a couple by the same author, but my, I definitely have one that sort of started my um, girl crush. Uh, so Brene Brown, um, is a, is a phenomenal speaker, um, and author and her first book that I really sort of grabbed onto, um, was the gifts of imperfection. Mm. Um, and it's literally goes so well with the discussion we just had and probably what has made my career so much more fulfilling, um, is literally learning how to embrace your imperfection. Nice. Right? So nice. embracing who you are in all of those pieces and then showing up as that person in your business, um, works, works beautifully. And, um, yeah, she's a great author. There's nothing that she's written that isn't great. So when <laughs> yes. one, then you just become a, yeah. a fan. Um, she has a new book out Atlas of the heart. I don't know if you've, I haven't read that one. No. So I'm listening to it on audiobook between showings. Um, and it's all about the different emotions and, um, news flash, there's like hundreds more than most of us <laughs> yes. have any idea of, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, but it's super fascinating and so relevant in real estate because I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like, yeah, there's so much more going on when someone calls you and you're trying to figure out like where they're at and why are they doing this or what's happening? Um, understanding like these different layers and all these different emotions and like what can be playing into it. I'm like, oh man, this is, this is gold. So, but oh. um, yeah, gifts of imperfection is, is my first answer, but technically anything by Brene Brown will improve 
anyone's life. Well, I'll put both those in the show notes for, for people to check out. I'll have to check that out myself. Uh, she's an awesome author. Yeah, I, I love, I've read a number of her books. She's, she's fantastic. So how can our viewers check out what you're up to, connect with you and find out more of what you're doing? Yeah. Um, so on Insta is where I'm sort of most active. Um, so at Kate Sells Kawartha is my uh, is my handle there. And then um, our website um, is kateandkevin.ca. Um, so if somebody wants to check out our website and sort of some of our community-based stuff, um, it's there. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes as well. So our viewers can check it out. So Kate, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you bringing your authentic self and, and bringing who you are and, and sharing that experience with our, our viewers. I know they're going to get a lot of this. And if they embrace themselves and, and, and really put their, their self forward, they can build any kind of business they want. You just have to get out there and do it, like you said, and, and worry, worry, la- or worry later. So that's Wait, great worry. advice. I'll wait to worry. Exactly. So, <laughs> so thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And I know our viewers are going to get a lot out of this. Cool. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub- like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. Happy farming.